What is good, YouTube? Courtney Elise here, aka Court Crimes TV, and welcome to my new channel. If you happen to enjoy, please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. I also have another channel where I upload every Friday. The link will be down in the description below. Last but not least, please follow me on Instagram at Courtney Elise. Let's get into the video. In today's video, we will be talking about the very disturbing and disgusting case of Adrian Jones, a.k.a. the boy who was fed two pigs. This story is about to get very graphic, very disgusting. I don't understand how a parent can do this to their child. As a parent, you're supposed to love your child and protect your child. But Michael, he literally threw his child out as if he was trash. Adrian Jones was born May 15th, 2008, to parents Michael Jones and Diana Pierce. Adrian was a cute, precious little boy. He had beautiful brown eyes. He had beautiful skin complexion. He had a cute little smile. He was just all around adorable. Your typical seven-year-old little boy. He was just so cute. Adrian was the youngest of seven siblings. He had six older sisters, and he was the baby boy. The only boy. Can't imagine what he's going through. Despite Adrian being the baby and the only boy, he adored his siblings. He adored his sister. He also adored his grandmother, Judy Conway. His grandmother said that one of her favorite memories of Adrian was that he would always tell her that he was going to play football. Adrian was a very outgoing, athletic, little seven-year-old little boy. And he wanted to play football when he got older, so that's a great outlook on life. For the first few years of Adrian's life, Adrian was living with his mother because his mother and father, Michael Jones, split up. At the age of two years old, Adrian was unfortunately found unsupervised and was taken away from Diana. In my opinion, they should have given Adrian and his siblings to his grandmother because it seems like his grandmother was well put together, straightforward. She looked like she was a good legal guardian for her grandchildren. But unfortunately, since Michael was the biological father of Adrian and his siblings, he got full custody of them. At this point in Adrian's life, Michael is now married to a woman named Heather. So, Michael and Heather Jones. We gonna get on Heather later on in the video. Now I must add that two months before Adrian was even put into the custody, the care, and I'm gonna keep using quotations because Michael and Heather had no care for this little boy. They were not parents to this little boy. But two months before Adrian and his siblings were put into the care of Michael and Heather Jones, there were already complaints made against this couple. In the reports made against them, there were complaints all over the house and there was no food. If child services would have done their job and did a background check on these people, they would have known that no child should, should be living with them. I don't care if Michael was the biological father of Adrian and his siblings. They should have ran a background check. All of this, this whole story could have been avoided. Adrian could be living his life right now, but child services failed to do their job correctly. While in the custody of Michael and Heather Jones, this is when Michael decided he wanted to start the Jones Academy. He wanted to homeschool his children. This is also when the abuse towards Adrian reportedly began. As you can imagine, education was the last thing on Michael and Heather's mind. They had the children doing chores, you know, around the house supposedly, but little Adrian had the worst of the worst chores. Mind you, at this point, Adrian's around three or four years old. They made this little boy go outside in the winter of Kansas. I live in South Louisiana, and it gets cold down here, kinda gets cold, but I can imagine what it's like in Kansas. 
for a three or four year old little boy to be outside chopping wood. They made Adrian go outside and chop wood in the winter. I don't understand it. If they if they wanted this wood chopped so bad, Michael should have took his ogre looking self outside and chopped the wood. Heather should have took her Bart Simpson Bob's burger looking self outside and chopped the wood if she if they wanted this wood chopped so bad. If Adrian wasn't chopping the wood right, if he wasn't doing the chores right, they would punish him by making him stand outside for hours and hours on end with his arms above his head. This is when they started to mentally and psychologically abuse Adrian. Heather was the main antagonist throughout the entire beat. Michael was 100% a part of it too. I'm not trying to make him seem like he is innocent because he absolutely wasn't. He is a piece of dog stuff, if you know what I mean, just as much as she is. You know, matter of fact, they're worse than that. Dog crap is better than them. Every which way possible, Heather would dehumanize Adrian. She would call him that boy. She would call him the boy. That boy. She couldn't call him by his name. Calling him by his name is just too, too loving. She wanted to make sure that he knew that she didn't love him. So she would call him that boy. She would call him a psychopath. You know, she would just talk about him as if he was the scum of the earth. This is a little boy. A little boy. Eventually, Michael and Heather would split up. You know, Heather was not allowed to be around any of the children in the house. She was supposed to stay far, far away from them. Police and child services ultimately identified her as the problem. They identified her as the problem, but they still didn't save him. They still didn't save Adrian. Like, come on. Michael also had to sign documents that ensured his children were safe from discipline and harm. Heather could not be anywhere around these children. And Michael signed a document. He had to keep his children safe. Now, I would love to sit here and say that, you know, all was well in the end. Michael kept his word. He kept Heather away from the children. But I would be lying, unfortunately. He and Heather would get back together. With Heather being back in the picture, this is when she really started to target on little Adrian. This next part is about to get pretty graphic and disturbing. So if you do get triggered by abuse and child abuse, you can skip this part because it gets nasty. It gets horrible. Adrian was beaten with a wooden stick by Heather. She cracked his face open right here. She cracked the side of his face open. Mind you, all of these pictures, Heather was documenting. Heather was taking pictures of, of everything she was doing to to poor little Adrian. She got a sick, sadistic turn on. Instead of getting Adrian the proper medical attention, she was coward to go to the hospital and get him proper medical attention. She supposedly had a medical background. Okay. She stitched him up herself and documented her stitching him up. Like, who, who wants to see, who wanted to, why was she safe? Like, I don't understand her. Like, why... And I don't understand Michael. I don't understand them. Adrian was forced to stand outside overnight in a filthy, disgusting, green pool up to his neck. The pictures are so sad. You see in his face, he's given up. He was forced, they handcuffed him to tiki torches. He was forced to stand outside again overnight and hold tiki torches all night. They handcuffed him from his ankles to his wrist, behind his back, and he was forced to eat out a dirty, filthy, disgusting, maggot-infested bowl. He was handcuffed behind his back, so he couldn't eat, sit and eat the food like a regular person. He had to literally bend over with his arms behind his back and lift the cup over his, over his face like that with his mouth. Like, come on, dogs get treated better than Adrian was treated. They strapped him to an inversion table and wrapped like ace bandages, medical bandages around his face, around his eyes, on his arms and legs. They were just really tearing this little boy down in the worst way possible they could. They would strip Adrian naked and throw him in a shower. They ripped the original door off of the shower and put like a huge piece of plywood over it. 
That way he couldn't get out of it. They wanted to make sure he was stuck in that shower. Michael put alarms on the refrigerators. He put alarms on the cabinets. That way he was alerted if Adrian tried to sneak food. Mind you, all of this started because they said Adrian was stealing food. Come on now, a child ain't stealing food. He's seven years old. Like, a child is not stealing food. They're, they're growing. They want to eat. They eat a lot. They eat a ton. My niece and nephew are here, and they eat, like, two full grown men on an NFL team. So Adrian is not stealing food. He's just a growing little boy, and they deprived him of food and love. <sighs> They would get a bar of soap and they would shove it so far in his mouth to where I'm pretty sure he was gagging. He couldn't get it out because, like I said, he was handcuffed behind his back. He was shackled so long that his little ankles and little wrists became inflamed. They became swollen from the handcuffs and chains that they put on him as if he was a prisoner, as if he was a dog. They would taunt him by placing cooked good food in front of him and just walk away. They knew he couldn't get to it because like I said, he was handcuffed from the wrist and the ankles and they would place a plate of food in front of him and just walk away. Psychologically destroying this little boy. There's some sick people in this world and they're not even people, they're just demons, they're demonic. Adrian was kept in the shower, slowly deteriorating. His face became gaunt. You can see in his eyes, he was just gone. He had given up. But he tried. His siblings said that they would hear him screaming through the vents. I'm dying. I'm about to die. I'm dying. And you know what this Bart Simpson? Bart Simpson looks better than this, this thing. You know what she told him? To suck it up. She told a seven-year-old little boy to suck it up. Then one day, all alone, in this cold, dark shower, Adrian would succumb to his injuries and starvation. He died all alone in a makeshift shower, pretty much a, a cell by himself. Michael and Heather didn't even have the, the decency to, you know, call the police and give him a proper burial. They left his body in the shower for two weeks. They left his corpse just laying there, rotting away, mummifying for two weeks. During those two weeks, they went out and bought some pigs. And they purposely did not feed these pigs. They wanted to make sure these pigs were starving. And one day, Michael took his son's body, the one that he was blessed to have. He was blessed to have a son. God blessed him with a son. He took this child's body and threw him into the pigs. And the pigs ate him. I don't understand how you can do that. I'm not a parent, but I'm an aunt. And I don't understand how you can do that to your child. That's horrible. And it's also stated that Heather actually called her dad and told him that they killed him and that it was going to be on the news. So she had no shame. You know, she had absolutely no shame. In November of 2015, the police were called to the home of Michael and Heather. Heather reported a domestic abuse against Michael. She said that Michael had hit her and that he was trying to he should have, and then he should have did it to himself. That's my opinion, because none of them deserve to live. Adrian didn't get the chance to live a happy life, so why do they? When police arrived to this house, they were shocked as to what they were walking into, because this house was filthy. This house was disgusting. There was mold everywhere. The walls were riddled with holes. There was rat poison all over the floor. There were dead rats everywhere, trash thrown everywhere, moldy food wrappers thrown everywhere. There was adult content, if you know what I mean, all over the house. No child should have been able to live in this type of environment. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if detectives and child services would have done their jobs, they would have known this by now. They would have known that there were it's all over the house. They would have known that it was an unstable environment for these children to live in, but they didn't. The police would ultimately find out that Adrian has been missing. I'm assuming that Adrian's mother's side, Diana Pierce and his grandmother, you know, were trying to get in contact with Michael, but they weren't getting answers, which is sad because Adrian's grandmother tried. You know, she tried. I hope she doesn't feel any guilt because she tried. Michael and Heather were just crappy. They were horrible people. Due to Adrian being missing, 
Michael and Heather would get arrested. While in police custody, Heather would call her landlord, Jen Hoovers, Jennifer Hoovers, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but she would call her landlord to go over to the house and download some pictures of the children. And you know, Jennifer was like, okay, I'll go over there. I'm assuming that's what she said. Once she gained access to the iCloud account, back at the police station, Heather would coldly say that if you look around the property, you'll find his body. This thing, I don't even want to call her a woman. This thing, it was so cold to this little boy. Adrian didn't do anything to you, but you're treating him like the scum of the earth. And you say, if you look around the property, you'll find his body. Heather tried to play victim. She tried to put all the blame on Michael. She tried to say that she was scared that since he killed Adrian, she thought he was gonna kill her too. She claims that she wanted to help Adrian. She wanted to save him, but Michael punched her teeth out. Come on now. Once Jen, the landlord, saw these pictures, she immediately went over to the police station and gave them everything. It's so sad what happened to this little boy. I know I keep saying it, but it's really sad what happened to Adrian because this could have been prevented. It could have been prevented. Both Michael and Heather would ultimately be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for at least 25 years. They should not get 25 years. They should be in jail for the rest of their life. You know, they shouldn't get the opportunity after 25 years to possibly get out. But they should be in jail and die and rot in this cell. Just like Adrian died and rotted in that shower cell. They shouldn't get a second chance at life. Adrian couldn't get a second chance at life. It's so sad. These are my opinions of the entire case. The system failed Adrian. They failed him. If they would have done their jobs properly, Adrian could be a football player like he wanted to. He could have lived his dreams and possibly been playing in college right now, playing at some D1 college. Two years, this is about to make you really mad, but two years before Adrian's horrible demise, horrible murder, he actually talked to the police and told them that his dad kicked him so hard that a little bone fell out. Who listens to a child tell them this and they don't take it serious? It's said that they didn't see marks on him so that's why they didn't take him out. He told the detectives in child services that his dad kicks and punches him in the stomach and head. He told them that his mom, stepmom, Heather, would pull his ear so hard to where it really, really hurt. Those were his words. They never took him out of their custody. How can they sleep at night knowing that they are the cause of this child's death. I don't understand how Michael and Heather did this, how they could do this to this little boy. Like he was so cute and precious. I don't understand how the detectives talked to him and did not take him out. If a child tells me that their dad kicked them so hard that a piece of bone fell out, that should be ultimate. Like, yeah, we taking him out of, out of these people's custody. We giving him to his grandma. But they didn't do that. The parents failed him, parents, and the system failed Adrian. Adrian doesn't have to worry about being hurt no more. He is a little angel. He is in heaven. He is free. He is happy. Rest in peace, Adrian.